Well, hello, everybody. Uh, just going to go live and talk about a new project that <clears throat> I've become involved in and uh, some of the inspiration behind it. But uh, a big thanks to uh, Beatles Eternally and to The Big Clue, because uh, between both of them, it's kind of inspired me to take on a new project. As some of you know, I've been involved in the five-year franchise files. I've got a lot of teams. In fact, I've just added a few more teams this week. So probably here by this coming weekend, I'll put some updated uh, files out there for download and make them available. But I'm pausing on those efforts and working on, a, I guess you could say it's a Negro League project, right? Um, I've got up here on the screen showing one of Action PC's uh, seasons that I own, which happens to be the 1934 Negro League season. And thanks to a lot of the work over its seam heads and, and that information has been captured over into uh, baseball references, uh, many facets of it. Um, all the research has been done into the league. So this is an existing 1934 Negro League file. And you can see we can go in and look at some of the rosters. Here's uh, the Pittsburgh uh, Crawfords, for example. And you can see some of the people on uh, Here's Judy Johnson, Satchel Page on there. Can take a look at some of the pitchers. Um, these are great. And you have the ability to go in here and replay a season. But interestingly enough, I got to thinking, what kind of a homebrew file could I do? So my next homebrew was going to be taking a player, a major league player's best three years, chosen by me, looking at OPS and ERA plus, whatever. And I had started about a week ago. Well, I really started way back using a player's best five years. And I had quite an extensive file. It's probably about 12, 13 years ago. Um, I've readjusted my thoughts, and I think now I'm just going to put together a file that has the best three years a player had during their career, and then neutralize those. In other words, you know, remove um, the park effect and all that good stuff, and just bring them into a um, a neutralized position. That'd be great for um, a draft league. You think about uh, Dave Cook and Action PC puts out a great history collection. In fact. If you're an owner of Action PC Baseball, that's a must own, that history collection. Um, some, they have great sales going on there. I would, I would advise to look out for sales and grab that because it basically they have every player that ever played in the history of baseball rated. And what they did is, you know, they've got their own internal uh, algorithms and formulas they use to determine a player's peak, but they took, you know, a slice or a peak. Um, and then they have some rationale that they explain for, you know, how they rated those. Um, Diamond Mine Baseball Online uh, also has like an all-time greatest. Of course, they don't have every player uh, carded or available, right? They have only with a minimum number of significant at-bats or inning pitcher on there. But the one interesting thing that they do have is they have Negro League players included in that. And that's one of the things that um, I thought about. Uh, and Beatles and Big Clue got me fired up yesterday when I got to thinking, well, you know, I'm going to do this greatest players project. Why not do it along with the Negro Leagues? So I'm going to tackle the Negro Leagues first. And what I'm going to do is, utilizing some great resources, neutralize those so that when I create the Major League Baseball best three years neutralized, the two can match up and live and coexist together. And the reason I like that is I can have a file that's just separate for Negro League, great players, neutralized. And then I can do the same for MLB and then even combine them. So you could do some fun draft projects. Uh, some of the resources, people say, well, how are we getting all this data? Some of the great things you can do, and I'll pull up a cool site right over here and share it, is Seamheads. If you've never been there, it's a great place to go, right? And I'm looking at uh, Martin DeHigo right here. Um, and what's really nice about this is they've got some great percentiles. So when I'm looking at given people uh, ratings, right, to be able to build and homebrew in action. This is a great example of, of a resource that I use um, along with fan graphs is right here, it seems that you can see that you've got, you know, a hold rating here, right? So it's going to give you in its picture kind of an estimation and that you can research you know, kind of how they come up with these, but, you know, a 71th percentile. So if I'm going to sit here and grade Martin DeHigo as his hold rating in action, which uses a one to 10 rating, 
I can come right here and say, hey, I know he's about a seven. So I can use that right here. So it's a very easy way to get that. Fielding data, as you can see here, I can go look at his fielding, get raw numbers, or I can come down here, break down by position, and I can start looking at his uh, defensive run save. So you can see here, if you start looking at first base, you know, he's above average, uh, right about average here, 1.1 1 .1 at second base, you know, above average at third, average at short. So these are great, helpful tools when I go to rate some of the defensive position. Just so happens with Mark. Martin De Higo, he's playing so many positions. It takes a little bit while to get, uh, you can really get bogged down in rating. And here is the big clue. And I'm going to say, uh, again, big clue, uh, you might be just joining now, but uh, I'm explaining a little bit about why this project in the last couple of days has become a big thing with me. And he's a big part of it because what big clue did is he turned me on to a website and subsequently, uh, research done on major league equivalencies, right? So people say, well, we know what they did in their own league, right? Year by year. And we can go here and look at 1934, the Pittsburgh Crawfords, right? Um, let's do better. Let's, let's just look for a player. Let's go to 1934. And if you've got a, any file in action, you can hit organize and do a player search, which is fun. And let's take a look uh, at Josh Gibson because I happen to be working on him right now. And he's in there twice, right? So he's in there. Let's see here. He's in here under the Crawfords, right? And you can see it. it's showing his batting line here. He batted 315 with, you know, uh, what, 14 homers and 238 at-bats. Hey, Ken Castro, glad you're here too. Um, and it shows, you know, where they've got him rated based on what he actually played that year, right? And then... Uh, of course, uh, actions given them, they've come up with their own ratings and arm rating and all that good stuff right here. So um, we can see that uh, he's on that card for 1934, Josh Gibson. I'm currently working on him right now. Midlife Crisis, MV, all the regulars from uh, Beatles Eternally and the Dead Ball channel coming in. Yeah, and Big Clue's talking about this research. So let me talk a little bit about this research, right? So if we play this league, uh, that's this league is all based on what he really put up in that league, right? So completely different than how do you bring them over to the major league? How much of a hit do they take, right? Um, so let's take a look at that site. And it's great, great stuff. I've got so many windows open right now. I want to kind of talk about this. Let's see. Okay. And this is a great site right here. Um, the Hall of Miller and Eric, right? Where they, they really go into tra the traditional stats for Negro League hitters, right? They, they talk about how they're using MLEs, which are major league equivalents. Like, how do you factor in how these players? So, they great reading if you're into all this stuff. I spent uh, yesterday last night and part of today going through here um, and looking at the rationale. The other interesting thing that I was able to do from this site is get a hold of their database, which is all downloadable. And this is great in that what I've got here is they've got a lot of the players that have their, their wins above replacement, their war, done and the ones that are above average, right? So I'm starting with the great players and eventually maybe work our way down to every player. So my goal is rating their best three seasons and I'm using a lot of that based on not just their normal stats that they put up, but these MLE um, neutralized equivalents that um, these folks have done this work on. And it's just great. So you can see here for Josh Gibson, They've got all of the seasons he played. And what they've done is they've taken the games he's played. And, you know, sometimes they're playing 40, 50, 60 games a year, right? So if he played 60 games out of his team's 70 games that they played that year, for example, right? You could, you could do the math and say, well, that's 85% of his games. So then if you multiply that times a 154-game schedule that was typical back then, that'd come out to 132 games, for example. So they've done a lot of this work. And what they're showing here is the lines for uh, translating that to a major league equivalency in 154 game schedule. So this gives me some great 
numbers to then figure out how I want to use these to create these files. So, um, man, it's great. And yeah, you're right. Like Big Clue saying, like Pete Hill, a lot of these, it, it's just all we know about them. So I'm trying to take what we know about them, uh, what we do know, and then use their formulas here that translate that to a more normal MLB season and use some of those to help standardize my approach. So what I've done is kind of taken my own, I've got my own recipe going here, right? And, and what I've really done is there's another great thing I can tell you that I find very interesting is DMB Online. If anybody's ever played there, they've got a great, what I call reverse engineering league. So if, they, if you run a standard league there, that which means you can't really load up on super, super all-stars because you have a, um, a salary uh, cap. So if you just look at their standard leagues, you can go in there at their site, uh, which I'm a member of, and go in there and look at how the players have done in sim leagues and there's tons of data. So for example, I might go in there and look at, I'll pull one up. In fact, I'll pull my sheet, I'll show you kind of how I'm working off of. This makes sense to me, it won't make sense to anybody else, but th this will be the sheet that I'm working off of. I've got a couple, I've got another sheet over here where I compute stuff, but these are the players I've done already as far as their batting info. And the one I'm working on down below here is Josh Gibson. So I've got Josh Gibson's line here of what he really did. And it's taking these three seasons right here and average. I get my average. Now I know what he did in his real Negro League context, right? Then I'm bringing in those same three years over here and getting the equivalencies um, that's been crunched by this great group of people over here at... Um, the Hall of Miller and Eric, right? So just wonderful, wonderful stuff. And I'm taking that. Let me go back to here. I have all my different ones up. And I'm taking that. Oh, I'm on the wrong sheet. I have too many open. Yeah, franchise best three. I've taken that and I'm I'm weighting it. It's what I'm really doing. I'm providing my own weights. This right here up here would be kind of the reversed engineer line for Josh Gibson in that standardized league um, where they're playing mixed in with major leaguers. I find this very interesting because it really gives you as a resource kind of insight into um, how a DMB approach rating them. Then I can kind of reverse engineer this and come up with a line for this that's weighted a certain percentage. Then I can come up with an average of these three seasons, right? Weighted a certain percentage. And then I can take their normal season they had and let that be weighted a much smaller percentage. And I'm not going to go into how, keep a little bit of my recipe, uh, I guess, uh, in-house for me, but that's what I'm doing. I'm taking a combination of that information um, and some other things I'm looking at because I have a sheet that has some, um, uh, where I have some formulas, uh, very similar to what Dave uh, Cook used, where you have missing data, right? What, where you have missing player data on like maybe strikeouts and different things like that and um, stolen base caught stealing percentages and looking at some historical numbers in that era by era and applying some of that logic. Because some of this is real, it's guesstimate work, right? It's your best guesstimate on this because we're doing two things. We're trying to fill in the blanks for these leagues and we're trying to normalize them in some way and put them in the context of MLB. So for me, what I hope to have when I'm done is a Negro League file that has players, the greatest players, maybe more if I've got time to get to it, that are rated on their best three years in the Negro Leagues, right? And then convert it over to major league equivalencies. Because then that could be a standalone file that you could use to do Negro League drafts and play, right? But also my goal is to then, where I have to pull, well, this is that file. A franchise three. So you can see I've already started crunching some numbers over here for like, I think the Reds and the Giants. Give you some Reds. Got some five-year stuff being crunched where the, with the three years I'm using for the Reds over here where I'm averaging things out. Um, because ultimately I want to get a file that has all major league players the same way. Neutralized, removed from ballpark, neutralized based on just the best three years. 
and then have them be able to coexist with the Negro League so that you could have an independent Negro League. But if you brought those files together, they're, they've already been neutralized and MLE'd, I'll call it MLE'd to the best of anybody's knowledge. So if anybody's interested in all this stuff, you right here, they have a link on this site to our latest MLEs right here where you can download it. I just download it again, open it up, and you can see they have a great README file here on um, on picture notes. Right, they, just some really good stuff that they have as far as um, um, the information. I mean, it, it's just it's just incredible how they've done a lot of this work that uh, for a home brewer like me that would tackle a, a, a Negro League project. I now finally feel like, okay, good. I've, I've got a good start here to be able to do some of that transition because you know, I'm no math, don't claim to be any math wizard or guru. I love playing around with this stuff, but they've done a lot of the hard crunching that helps me um, get the numbers where they are. So as Big Clue says, there's no end to this for geeks like us. You are exactly right. Um, yeah. And he's also talking about Japanese stars and things like that that they're working on as well. So just some really cool stuff here um, on some of the hitters, uh, notes on the pitchers. The other file that I had up here from their database, as you can say, they got a good readme file. It shows the people that they've done right here. Um, and then there's people that have too little data. I think they're moving. I think what they've done right here on the readme is pretty much taken anybody that's got plus war ratings and um haven't dealt with anybody that's below average players yet so you know if i was to at least create all the ones that are above average which to me would be great for a draft league it looks like we've we've got um what at least 500 plus five to six hundred players technically that could be on a file my goal is to kind of um use uh where are we here As I look at all the uh, windows I happen to have open here, as I look at oh, maybe I close that one out right here. We can go to seam heads right here. I should have a hot link up top here. We go to seam heads and look at this. And if you can go into the Negro Leagues database here, right here, and we can look at wins above replacement career. This is kind of where I'm starting. This is a great place to start. You can look at the career war people. There's Oscar Charlton, Martin De Eagle I'm doing now. And my goal is to make sure I can kind of just run down this list so that I'm building the most prominent uh, players I can first, and then kind of work my way down to however many I get done. So that's my goal. Um, so I just wanted to come live and kind of share some of this as I'm, I'm totally absorbed in it now. As I go and I create each player, I'm also, uh, as far as photo packs, because I am obsessed with doing the uh, photo packs, I'm already grabbing some photos and figuring out what kind of a generic, uh, like a Negro League card template I want to do similar to my other stuff and have a few pictures for each player. So each player that I get complete, I'm stopping grabbing pictures as I go so that uh, you know I won't have to wait and play catch up and um yeah having fun with that see what we got in here um yeah no apologies for being your drug yeah big clue keeps feeding me all kinds of cool stuff hey you want some mles yeah he fed me those and it's this is just awesome that we have this kind of data to help out so um a lot of what i'm doing here is that i'm crunching a combination of numbers over here um, again, I think I showed you right here where you can see the, um, let's take a look at fielding. So you can take a look at fielding games played, right? You can take a look at their, their range, run saved from their range. This is great. This is great information when I'm trying to figure out range ratings. Um, in action to assign them at the various positions, along with uh, some of the MLB information they've done for um, for their positions and their batting and pitching. It's just I'm like a kid in a candy store now, thanks to Big Clue. So hopefully, uh, I know Beatles Eternally is 
involved in a dead ball, their Ned McGreevy League, and I know they want to do something for Black History Month in February, and their goal was to do some type of project with a Negro League file. And this really motivated me. So right now, I'm putting down my five-year franchise files, and I'm going to see how much work I can put in this to crank out, hopefully, by the time February ends, sometime in February, we could have a nice draft file for him to do a project and be interesting. I need to kind of know from him how uh, how many teams he wants so that we can have at least, you know, 20 some players on a team. And I can figure out if it's going to be, you know, 200 or 300 players that need to be done and whether we have enough for positions and all that will kind of help me. But I definitely want to uh, prioritize with the greatest players kind of working down um, to do this. But yeah, it's cool, man. It's like, you know, I, I've, you get on these projects and I get excited and now I'm kind of reinvigorate, you know, the five-year franchise files have been a blast. Um, and again, I'm not trying to recreate anything. There's nothing out here and action does not have a Negro league compilation file. Um, they've got the definite season. So if you are interested in, again, um, the seasons they have, I can take a pop. I've got them all. You can see right here. I was looking through them all. They've got night. They've got Negro League seasons from the early 20s and, and then the mid to late 30s, and I think a couple from the 40s. I think they've got about eight or nine seasons. Um, you can buy them directly from them. But, you know, these are great for that season, right? But it's like, wow, how can we do a compilation of, you know, a peak? Call it a peak. I don't know if I really call it a peak. It's me making up what their peak would be. I'm just taking their three best years and using – all this data to come up with that stat line and the ratings, because that's the approach I was going to take with the MLB and both will be consistent. And then maybe someday, once we have this Negro league file, I'll work on the greatest players file. Then we can have, you can have them individual or combine them into one and um, do all kinds of fun projects with them, draft leagues, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, big clue is um, he set me up, man set me up for a lot more work but uh, and i can tell you like martin uh martin it actually is in spanish martin de eagle is um was tough i mean it takes he played every position and he pitched right so i haven't even gotten to doing any pitchers yet or any of the pitching numbers so one of the things i've done um let me see i've got some different files i'm working off of here bear with me uh, not that one. Not this one. Got all my 50. I had some 50s teams I was working on. Um, yeah, since most guys don't improve in their 30s, right? Let me see. So here's my best five years. So, yeah, you can see I was crunching it for the uh, MLB team by team. And what I may do to organize the uh, Negro League players too, is as I get through um, some of this stuff, and, and action now includes height and weight they want to do. So I, I'm, I'm going to grab all the stuff I need when I create the cards to make sure I've got all of them filled in. Any known nicknames, I'll be researching some of that. Height, weight, all that good stuff. I've yet to get to like some pitching lines. I've got some formulas and stuff I was using on my all-time greats for, there's one for Epirixi for uh, Cincinnati. I'll create one just like it to be able to crunch Negro League numbers. But if you can look at the fielding, like here's Martin DeEgo. I, I've made a note, like on that DMB file, what they have rated. And then I've come in there and, uh, and assigned them actual ratings. That was just kind of me uh, while I was looking at it, taking a note. But then I've given them final ratings. Um, based on the data that I'm seeing at um, this good old site right here, right here. This is great. So you get cool Papa Bell right here. I can go to his fielding. I can break it down by position. I can come down here and look at, you know, his range on here and how he's doing in different years overall, all kinds of good stuff. And you can come up here if you wanted a quick shot in his career and see, where is he at? So if you're looking at percentile, this would be a great thing. If you're looking at the entire context of that league, you can look at this percentile and say, gosh, he's average. So if you did a career rating over career, he's probably a five. You give him a five in center field right here. Um, and then you can read a little bit more into 
well, not right clicking, but how they come about with some of these this information. Uh, let's see, what's another one we got here? Who's another good one we can take a peek at here? Let's take a look at Turkey Stearns, who I have created, right? You take a look at Turkey Stone Stearns. We can go, we can hit, hit regular fielding right here. And you can see the league averages and ranges and all, and all that kind of stuff. But you can also, which is great, is they've got run safe for arm. So then if you're looking at, you know, what kind of arm rating do you give this guy? Well, in 1926, he's above average. So you might want to make him a seven based on that many runs. But right over here, where he's less than a point either way, he's probably a five or a six, in my opinion. He's going to be right about an average arm. So this is just a little insight into um, kind of how my approach goes on here. But man, this is really, uh, Seamheads is a really great resource for this. And then now coming onto these MLEs, which convert them over has been great. So I'm taking all the different resources I have, and I've kind of figured out a weight ratio I'm putting to it. I'm going to maintain that consistency and apply the same methods that I'm doing here when I do the major league players as well. Um, I'll make use of my neutralizing access I have to the uh, stat head uh, part of that subscription I'm paying for now. But you can see Turkey Stearns in center field, and based on his career, 82nd percentile. So right away, based on a career you'd feel like giving him an eight in center field would be uh, uh, pretty fair. But anyway, I'm looking at multiple sources uh, and doing my ratings. If we go over to Turkey Stearns, let's take a look at Turkey Stearns. I can never, while I'm navigating multiple screens here, never find, uh, there's the file I want to go to right here. And you can see right now I've got him, and I may go back and exit, I've got him as an eight in center field. Um, I haven't rated him for left or right yet. I got to figure those out because he's only going to play a couple games in each. Um, and to me, I'm not going to rate him unless they've played at least enough to get two games worth averaged out, right? But you can see he was pretty much a center fielder for the, th and then I'm listening to the three years I'm using and that good stuff. So it may not be interesting to everybody, but this is kind of a little peel back the window into how the sausage is made and I'm having a blast with it. So right now I'm on my, what have I got right here? I think I got, this is my 10th player and I've just started today and um, it's Josh Gibson. So I'll be working on him as we get through it with some of these lines and I transfer some of this reverse engineering and weight it down here and I'll take these three lines, that one, and then what he did in real life, and I'll put him into my mixer, and uh, it'll spit out a line like here you'll see. So you can see for this file right here, batting-wise, and there's a couple of things I'm double-checking on intentional walks and, and some of that just to try to make it resemble a real season. But um, you can see right here, this is a big line right here, Oscar Charlton, uh, Charleston taking 21, 22, and 25. So it's an average of like 1923. And you can see right here with this line, Pretty nice, batting 356 with 26 home runs. A lot of runs, a lot of RBIs, steals 28 bases, um, walks almost as much as he strikes out. So um, pretty good defense as well. I've got him rated. is either going to be a 9 or a 10. I've got this at a 9.5 because I, I'm kind of, you know, on first base, he's also pretty good. Um Kind of got where my got my arm ratings and all that, and then I'll go back once I get through this and kind of double check and make sure I feel good about all these ratings. Um, let's take a look at Charleston's arm while we're looking at it. If we go over and look at another source here, yeah, let's take a look at Oscar Charleston. Oh, we can just go this way too. And let's take a look at his fielding. And you can go over here and start looking at his arm rating, depending on the year, right? He's going to be above average in a few of these years, right around average in the others. So I might take that eight and make it a seven. Maybe I make it a six. Maybe I meet, I'll leave it an eight. It's something that there's a lot of subjectivity that gets into it. Even though you got some bad hair, right? There's always this little polish of subjectivity you got to put onto it to where I feel. The one thing that I do is, you know, I keep that approach consistent as I'm using these factors to come to these determinations. So anyway, I, 
I don't think anybody's tackled this for action that I know about. Uh, something like this, like a compiling seasons or a peak or an all-time great file. But um, this has now become my obsession. So I guess lucky me. <laughs> I'll be less sleep. I'll be thinking of things. And did I do it right? And do I go back and adjust? So um, I may pop on here every week or so. And maybe if anybody's interested, leave me some comments. I may pop on in here every week or maybe every couple of weeks if I've got some momentum and maybe update where I'm at or things I found or if I've done any readjustments. But um, yeah, looking forward to this. And hopefully I can meet the deadline for uh, Beatles and uh, and their um, their league. So with that, um, going to sign off and uh, I may be back with another update by the end of this week, or I may wait a week, but um, see what happens. I'm definitely excited as I plug away on this. I think this is going to be a really fun project. Give me a chance to dig deeper into the Negro Leagues, because anytime I do these projects, it's super historical and learning. I love a lot of the learning that goes with it. Then you're going to click the pictures, which makes it even a little bit more personal. Um, and then putting some of the window dressing on it. So I'm uh, really looking forward to this. My only question will be, and I think I know the answer. When I create a blank file, um, I'm going to create a file and probably put the team that they're most representative with. You know, I, I, I thought, how do I categorize them? I could put them all on a file and have nothing show when you go into here and have them all be free agents. But that's not really fun because it's, you know, how would you look at them? So I'm still debating do, when I create the players, do I drag them all into a file? And then you'd have to go to the database here and look for the free agents, right? Or do I try to assemble in, in, with some logic on the franchise they played for? My goal is not to create, a, um, I guess, a file that's playable with all the teams, like with their greatest players and then balance with the schedule. It's not to do that at all. It's to really be a resource for those greatest players. So um, if I did assemble them on a team, it wouldn't be like ready to run a season out of the box per se, right? It would just be a place to go see and look at the stats or find your person based on where they played from, rather than just not having a team roster to look at and having to go here to the database and search, you know, all free agents down here. Um, so anyway, just some thoughts um, as I share. Uh, on the approach. Uh, here's 1937 season. Let's take a look at, uh, click on Josh Gibson led the league in home runs with 18. Let's click on his card in 37. There you go. 18 home runs and 152 at bats. So in a 550 at bat season, let's see what we've got here. Raw numbers. He would have hit 65 if he had 550. Now, again, there's a lot of things you got to look at here. Would that really be 65? So I doubt it when, you, when you're going to bring him over. Um, hey, thanks, Arnold's here too. Arnold's looking forward to this set. Yeah, I, I'm super pumped about this. I, I think this is going to maybe uh, fill like a little slot that isn't there for some of the action homebrews. And uh, really looking forward to this. And again, I'm really looking forward to this being its own file, but then also taking the same approach with, with MLB and being able to bring the two worlds together and have a combined greatest players file that's consistent. That would be ultimately be, be awesome for doing some draft leagues and different things. So anyway, fun stuff. I'll stay here rambling about this for a while. But uh, ah, creating uniforms. Interesting, Arnold. I don't know if I'm going to create uniforms because I'm not going to make it team specific but I am going to create cards. I was sharing just a little bit earlier that I do have, um, you can see I'm, as I create each player, I'm grabbing pictures for them. I'm gonna probably come up with just a standard um, template that's the same for everybody, like a Negro League template with maybe um, a logo. Um, I was looking at some of the logos that I may be able to put on that and um, versus team specific because they move around so much with different teams and all that and the uniforms would be would be kind of tough, but um, we'll see. At least there'll be pictures. So I'm making sure that I keep the pictures up as I create a player. So let's see how many I can crank out in a day. If I could do 10 players a day, let me think here. 
it's taken me quite a bit of research to get the players done though. But if I could bold and do 10 players a day, then by mid February, I could have 300 done. Who knows? Maybe that's, maybe that's really ambitious because what I'm finding is the research is as I'm getting my format down, it's getting a little quicker, but at the starting point here, it's been real slow, just making sure how I'm going to weight everything. And then a lot of the players in the Negro leagues play many, many positions. So that really slows down when I'm having to extrapolate out into a full game season, like how many games at each position based on a percentage of what they played in real life there. And then um, trying to get the ratings right. And then the rating numbers that are raw equivalent over to ML, MLE and neutralized. It just, you're having to do the math on all that. So yeah, he, he's looking at eight teams of 20 players. That's 160 players. Um, yeah. And it, it, that's what it'd be kind of nice to know. Uh, if um, yeah, and it, it is a big clue. It's taken me longer. Like I've worked all day, well, not all day, but when I've had breaks and all stuff and I, I'm, I'm on my 10th player right now because it has really, you know, I worked yesterday and last night to kind of figure out how I was going to get these formulas down, but I'm looking forward to it. So again, here's my 10 that I've got done. All my good stuff here. I always keep opening the wrong one because I have one that I created just for this file, but I'm, I'm going to use it on the greats file and, and then merge them all. or just have their own tab here. But uh, let's see what we got done here. Crunching my numbers. Um, yeah, so I've just got these 10 right here done. So fun stuff. Um, interesting to see what Gibson's home runs number will equate to. I tell you, Mule Sittles here is 32 home runs in his line. It was quite a home run hitter, still batting 309 on an equivalency. So this is a pretty nice line right here as far as a power hitter, but Buck Leonard's got power. Charleston's got the high average and power and speed and good defense. Turkey Stearns, I was surprised with the translated power he got, the home run power. It just didn't strike me as I dig into this and kind of research a little bit. Uh, that kind of, that really surprised me. Man, 28 home runs. So Detroit Stars player right there, Turkey Stearns. So yeah, more to come. Um, glad you're looking forward to it, Big Clue, because you started this. <laughs> you and Beatles, I'm going to blame for, for this. But uh, um, again, just checking in and sharing this and more to come. I will at certain points probably just post some updates as to how the progress is going. If you got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. But uh, definitely see you on a uh, forthcoming video. And a big thanks for those of you that popped in. I know Ken showed up, Midlife Crisis, MV, um, Big Clue again, Arnold. Um, great seeing everybody. Uh, it's been a good day of baseball.